So as Michael said, I'm going to talk about the arterial fragility in other types of fellas danlos syndrome other than vascular EDS. Um, so I work in the EDS service here in London. We, have, we are a highly commissioned service. We were set up 10 years ago in 2009. And we have two centres. So in the London centre, we see patients in the southern part of the UK. And we have our sister service in Sheffield, which sees patients um, in the north. And our role is to see and diagnose rare EDS types. Um, and we're also involved more and more with the management of these conditions and in research. Um, so here you can see our group of genetic counsellors and um, consultants and our administrative teams. So I think we're all familiar with the 2017 Nosology paper, which shows the 13 different types of EDS and the 19 different genes that are associated. Um, I'm going to focus today on two um, types of EDS, classical EDS and kyphoscoliotic EDS which are the two that are most known about at the moment um, in the literature to be associated with arterial fragility. So to talk about classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, this condition, these pictures show a patient with very typical um, features of classical EDS. So you can see here the hyperextensible skin, the joint hypermobility, see some scarring, epicanthic folds, and quite significant um, bruising for this little boy who's only six years old. Um, so we have major and minor criteria that have been um, written up in the nosology paper. So classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is caused by either pathogenic variants in either Col5A1 or Col5A2. So the most common variant type is actually loss of function, um, so very different to the typical glycine substitutions um, that are the majority of um, cases of vascular EDS that we've already heard described. So if we look at the vascular complications of classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, as you saw in the previous slide, it's not part of the diagnostic criteria for classical EDS. There was a review paper published last year which, look, which looked at the vascular complications for all non-vascular non, um, EDS types. And this showed about 11% of patients with classical EDS had vascular complications. This, however, included hematomas and varicose veins. So if you look specifically at arterial complications, there are nine cases that have been published in the literature so far. And interestingly, these are all Col5A1 pathogenic variants, not none in Col5A2. So this is a summary of the cases um, that have been published of classical EDS with arterial complications. The things that I think are important to note is you can see the age here, so quite varied. Um, there's one as young as nine here um, and going up to into the 40s. There's three patients all from one family, but if you look at the um, sort of distribution of the the uh, arteries and you can see it's very much sort of medium-sized vessels so very similar to what you would see in uh, in vascular EDS. What's interesting is the mutation type so you can see a disproportionately large number of glycine substitutions of course one is from the same family um, but have much higher number of glycine substitutions than um, than you would expect although of course the numbers are small. So we've looked at the data from the EDS service in the UK. We've examined a cohort of 153 patients with a clinical diagnosis of classical EDS. We've looked specifically for a history of arterial complications in our patients. And the results have shown that six out of 153 patients have had arterial complications. And again, all these patients had variants in Col5A1, none in Col5A2. And they've all had Col3A1 and Col1A1 excluded. So this is a summary of our six cases. Um, if you look at the variants, they're actually not in keeping with the previous literature described. So you can see a, a different a range of mutations, splice site variants, some whole, a whole gene deletion, some loss of function, um, and again, splice site and one substitution there. The other thing that's a little bit different is the age range. So we've got a, a slightly old, much older, actually, um, group of patients here. Um, Again, the numbers are small, so it's really difficult to sort of comment on that. Um, the type of complications, again, varied, medium-sized vessel, but there are two abdominal aortic aneurysms there. 
What's interesting as well is that not all fulfill the clinical criteria that we have for classical EDS. They're quite variable in their phenotype and whether this just reflects a autosomal dominant disorder where you do see incomplete penetrance and variable intrafamilial expressivity. Um, that's certainly the case. We've got within this cohort of patients <coughs> a few of them that are familial cases and only the probands have arterial complications, none of the relatives have any arterial complications and again there's varying degrees of clinical phenotype of the classical EDS. So we're very lucky to have joint vascular EDS clinics with um, Kate at um, St Bart's Hospital and we tend to follow these patients up as well, they've all been referred to our vascular EDS clinic and sort of managed in a very similar way given that they've all had arterial complications. So we've submitted that for um, publication. Moving on to COL1A1, this is a rare cause of classical EDS and vascular EDS, so that's a, um, a good example of demonstrating phenotypic overlap. Um, this particular arginine to cysteine um, variant has been reported, um, a number of cases have been published. And it's quite variable in the literature. Some of it is within the vascular EDS literature, some of it is in the classical, some sort of with vascular, classical-like. So there's varying um, sort of phenotypes between vascular and connective tissue. But when you look at these um, arterial complications that have presented in these cases, again, they're mostly medium-sized vessels. There's two patients who are unrelated um, out of 12 who've had iliac artery dissections, and there's other two other arginine to cysteine variants that have been reported at different locations of the COL1A1 gene, which are also associated with arterial fragility. So it is important to consider that perhaps these patients with these arginine to cysteine mutations, mutations should be monitored similar to how we monitor our vascular EDS patients. But I think this slide really highlights the importance of molecular testing and how um, confirming the molecular diagnosis is really important. <coughs> 